So the ladybugs, the ladybug larva has hatched from its pupa. And now we are seeing all kinds of lady beetles everywhere again. Pretty cool. These guys, once it gets down, I think I read somewhere it was like a steady 55 degrees, they actually hibernate, which I didn't know that either about ladybugs. They are a pretty nifty and beneficial insect to have around the garden. What you doing? I'm picking some, something I don't like. <laughs> what are you picking? What are these? Beans. I actually hit my head on these just a second ago. You're picking some big beans. We haven't been out here in a few days, have we? There's a big one right here. Yeah, that's the one we're going to save. We're going to let that one dry and have it for next year. Hey, can you, um, do you smell that smell? What? Smell the honey? Smell the goldenrod? I smell it while I was running back there. Yeah. So much. I wish everyone on YouTube could smell it. It smells good. It does. It smells but like... But I'm allergic to it. No, not goldenrod. You're allergic to ragweed, which is different than goldenrod. Don't uh, confuse the two because goldenrod is very, very beneficial. Okay, y'all. So we are still harvesting. We have cucumbers like Hi. crazy. Um, beans are doing great. Um, you see over here on the bench, I picked another watermelon. There's a cantaloupe behind it. Let's go see what else is oh, still growing. Huge cucumber. Huge cucumber. Oh my goodness, yeah. That one's kind of a little swirly. And there's still and cukes there's, coming. Well, it's right, like this one right here. So it was 90 something degrees today. I think probably right here. out here it was it was 90. Yep, there's some aphids on those, but those ladybugs will take care of it. I'm not worried about it. Um, right in our little a neighboring town. They hit a record today. The record was from 1931 and it had only gotten to 88 and so we hit 92 today in town. So things are still really growing. <laughs> those are our yard long beans. Like Don't know if I'll grow those next year. I'm not crazy about the flavor, the, the taste of these. We're gonna try the red Chinese noodle beans. Can I pick this guy? Yeah, you can pick them. Remember, hold on and then pull. Yeah, there you go. I see how long it is to you. Cool. So here we have some zinnia still doing good. There's Do you see there's what? some spaghetti squash back there that's growing? And then I have my onion. My lone onion. I oh, only had one onion get to full size because I pulled but the I others too guy. many. These guys are. No, they, yeah, you're right. These these may, but this is what they're supposed to look like. Those don't look like they're going out. Yeah. Red. Here we have some scarlet runner beans coming. Um, behind it is a zucchini that was a late plant. My tomatoes, you know, you can see they're pretty uh, naked down here. And then up here where they've dealt with the blight, there's some beautiful lush growth up here. But I'm not, I'm not thinking it's going to do much because any time now the 90 degrees will go away. What are you going to pick? Yeah, some of those I've given up on. The, the string didn't hold. Yeah, a lot of them are rotten. Um, my sweet million had a really pretty uh, fruit set here. It's just gorgeous. Look at that. And it went all the way up. Now this neck, next set did not do as well. So not having a great tomato year, which you guys already knew that. So the pathways still look great. Um, you see, there's a there's a few weeds, but guys, I've literally not weeded the whole time. And here you see some is coming, but nothing that I can't live with because there's really no need to weed at this point. There is another watermelon coming. We'll see if <gasps> that one. Yeah, our yellow doll watermelon. We'll see if that one oh, does okay. Over there. Another late zucchini. Oh yeah, you want to show them these tomatoes? These, I think they're called black beauties. Let me come around. On the top, but they're they look green on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, they're green on the bottom. Isn't that neat? 
Is, I think that guy's almost ready. Well, I'm kind of waiting on the, the texture of it. It's really, really hard at the moment. So I think I gotta wait until they soften up a little bit. This guy's soft. Yeah. Got some more spaghetti squash. Um, as you can see here, it has powdery mildew. At this point, I'm not doing anything about it because I'm getting ready to, to pull the plants anyway as soon as the rest of these because they're not setting any more what, fruit or anything. What do they do? Huh? Yeah. The powdery mildew? Yeah. It actually will eventually kill the plant um, if you let it go. You can treat it with a milk spray. You take like a cup of milk to two cups of water or something like that um, and you can spray it. But, you know, we've been really busy. Here's what this first row of corn looks like now. It's drying. I just love the look of this corn as it dries. It's just decorative to me. My pumpkin down there is getting big and orange. It does look fallish. You're right. And then um, this corn is getting a lot closer. Probably this weekend we'll finish harvesting it. I keep saying we're going to finish harvesting the corn. I come out here and it's still not quite ready. So I just saw another ladybug. Look at, oh, there's a pupa. There's a ladybug pupa right there. And so this guy will emerge in a couple days as a ladybug. And it will go eat my aphids. Levi down there on the corn. Is that another pupa down there? Right there? Or is it a ladybug? Yeah, it's a pupa. Pretty cool, there's, huh? There's a pupa over here. Is there? Right here. Here's some more cucumbers I need to harvest. Um, I gotta I got show you. Full. You got some beans. This cucumber base down here looks terrible. Look at that thing. Does it look awful? No, ah, I'll leave it. It does. But the plant itself is doing really well, so I can't complain. Cucumbers are so hardy once they get established. Again, you see a couple weeds here, but I mean, just watch. It is at the root. I can pull the whole thing off. Then I just lay it down to decompose and it feeds Is my soil. That? Yeah, that's part of a bean plant down there. I have pulled uh, quite a few bean plants here that were done. I have pulled several tomato plants. So we are starting to get some bare spots. And I'm so excited to um, show you what we're going to do in the fall to put, Mama, put it to bed. Look at this cute little oh, that's tiny, huh? Wow. Yeah, that didn't do too good, did it? I think it's going to grow. Chomping on it. Oh, there's a good chance it'll get chomped on. Look how pretty the sky is, Levi. All the pretty clouds. It's nice, isn't it? It's blue above us. Mm -hmm. There are so many beans. Where's that cluster you told me to get? Oh, here it is. The one you saved for me. You said I could have the privilege of getting this cluster. That was nice of you. There's one right there. Yeah, I'm gonna wait on that one just a little bit. I'm trying to get the bigger We've got one. the yard long beans. So um, what I do with the beans, I don't even blanch them because I have found a really neat trick to cook these. I cook them in the Instapot. And the Instapot is very forgiving. So I can, I wash them up, cut them up, and then I put them in the freezer and take them out and put them in the Instapot to cook. Uh, cook with potatoes, we cook them. We have a Cajun meal that we do with them with sausage and they're just perfect. So I am a lazy food preserver because I'm not home a whole lot during this season, unfortunately. So any little shortcuts I can do to make it quicker, that's what I do. Cut you. So to me, it looks like, let me get in here a little bit closer. See that pupa up here? It, it's hatched, it's, it's come out, and I'd say it just, it that ladybug out. right there came is out. what came out of that pupa. Or he could be wrong. Now he's gonna go, well probably not. I'd say he's right next to what he shed right here. Now he can go and eat all kinds of aphids for me. Now, he's, now it's time yep. to Yep, it's eat. been really cool to see the life cycle of a ladybug out here. So I have a question for you all. 
We have been eating our Tommy Apple Melons, which is literally the best melon I've ever grown or eaten. And it was from Baker's Creek. We, I winter sowed them, so I planted them sometime in March in the milk jugs. We planted them out in um, May in our hay bale raised bed. And we've only, we had about four fruits that set fruit, and we have one more that we're waiting on. We've had three so far. But now, let me show you what's happening. Okay, so we had our yellow doll watermelons and then our Tommy apple melons, which are these guys right here. The cool thing about them is they turn orange and they just slip from the vine when um, they are ready. This is from my yellow doll. See the indention there? Okay, so we've gone all summer long with just four. And now all of a sudden, I have, there's one down there. There's one growing right there. There's three over here, fruits. Um, now I don't know if they're getting pollinated or not. Look at all these flowers. I have not had flowers the whole entire summer besides the first couple that I had set fruit. And now it's like, oh, you know, there could be a frost in a month, so let's grow a whole bunch more melons. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited and sad at the same time because I don't think many of them will ripen. Um, there's still another big watermelon over here that I'm gonna pick here in the next day or two. I think it's about ready from the yellow bottom that you see. This is the only one from, I think it's a, I don't, I'm not even sure what watermelon this is. I have to look back. So again, why are my melons putting so much fruit on now at the end of the season? Is it because of the temperature back in June and July being so cold and rainy? Um, and, you, and you can see here my yellow doll leaves are all dying. Uh, and the Tommy apple leaves are green and healthy and doing some great stuff. So, if you all could help me, help me with that, I would appreciate it or what I can do next year, if anything, differently. Um, this, I actually am having to water this since it's been 90 degrees. This is the only part of the garden that I've had to water because it's raised. There's, there's probably, I don't know, 12 inches of soil underneath there, so it's off the ground. So, we have had to water that, but this is... This is a piece of cake, so to water, versus a whole entire garden that we have yet to water because of the deep mulch. So, any help with that, I would appreciate it. Thanks, y'all.